Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 13th and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out that trough digging out across the Pacific Ocean and you can see it's really amplifying the ridge across Pacific Northwest. We've been talking about this for what seems like a week and you can clearly see that clockwise rotation here marking the arrival of the ridge. We're really going to start to warm up here over the next few days across the region. We'll check out those details. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as well. As it looks like we go through this week, we're going to start to introduce some thunderstorm threat from the south kind of upper level low will be sitting off the california coastline here trying to bring some moisture into the region here some of that could be in the form of dry lightning we'll check out those details here in a moment and if we look closely here you guys might see some of this in uh, the sky across western washington uh, some of the willamette valley here the bedrock fire spreading some smoke from east to west across the region check out the skagit river valley there, kind of filled with smoke this morning and you kind of see it in the atmosphere out there i don't smell anything at the surface this morning i thought i smelled a little bit last night here but it's it's not nearly as bad as it can be, as you guys know, if you've been here for any length of time over the past five years or so. It's been pretty dramatic at times with some of the smoke making its way down into the big metropolitan areas. This is looking at the HER. It seems to show that fire. I believe that's a sourdough fire bringing some smoke down into the Skagit River Valley here. And you can see some of that get into the Willamette Valley. This could wreak some havoc on the high temperatures there across the Willamette Valley here. If we get any kind of significant smoke coverage here, of course, it's going to suppress the temperature in some areas and this is if you want to save 10% off this nice affordable home weather station it does have a nice UV index sensor on it as well it's matching up with much more expensive weather equipment and basically perfectly I'm very impressed with this station highly recommend it and you can see I'm kind of zoomed in on the Ballard area here and you can kind of click around and check out everybody's data out there and all you're going to see is their weather data of course and you can keep your information private if you want as well but just kind of scrolling around the Seattle area kind of interesting stuff you can see where all the locations are becoming a popular weather station out there this is looking at seattle yesterday a nice warm day here four degrees above average no precipitation not in sight right now we'll continue to watch that as we do have a trough potentially moving in as we go towards the end of this week towards next weekend we'll monitor that closely as we go and i don't know if we're going to break any record highs with this ridge coming across the area we'll, we'll continue to watch that as it looks like we could be pressing uh for 90 degree days between about one and three days here as we go through this week this is down for Southwest Oregon. Check it out. Very high and high and high risk areas for some of this heat that comes. Excessive heat through Monday, Monday night here. And you guys know the drill, what to do. Stay hydrated out there. Do your activities before 10 a.m. or after 8 p.m. Take frequent breaks. You guys know the drill. This is a Portland National Weather Service. They keep talking about this. You're going to have some temperatures probably up over 100 degrees over, as we go through the next few days here as well. Major heat risk and warm overnight lows will provide minimal relief. This is looking at Seattle, Tacoma. Check it out. You've got heat advisories, excessive heat warnings off to the east. You've got a gale warning out there over the coast. Uh, small craft advisories, excessive heat watch. We've got some red flag warnings. Be very careful if you're out across the Cascades, the west slopes. They are primed to start some fire activity here. All it takes is a spark. Be careful out there, people. This is looking at the European, the control run. Check out the ridge over the area here with the big trough out there amplifying it. And as we go off into the extended a little bit more, or just just a few days off into the future. You can see some of this troughing trying to get down towards the Pacific Northwest here with this upper level low also off the coast of California trying to bring some lightning back into the Pacific Northwest here and that could start some fires here. It doesn't show a lot of precipitation with that action down there as well. So yeah, any lightning strike that gets going is probably not going to have a lot of precipitation to extinguish it. This is looking at the European six hour precipitation in uh, type and the amount and we're looking at 850 millibar temperatures here in the red, nice warm air loft over the region and you can see by the time we get into monday you can see some of that activity trying to get into the oregon cascades here and we got to really be careful as some of that fire starts here and as we go a little bit further on into tuesday afternoon you'll see more of that activity moving up even across some of the blue mountains here and a lot a lot of precip showing up here but this is going to be in the form of thunderstorms here so this has the potential to start some fires now here we go total precipitation in inches on the gfs we're just going to scroll out through monday tuesday you can see it not a lot but this is going to be thunderstorm activity here across the area and as this moves up across north towards the blue mountains here and maybe up towards washington we'll see some of the models are in disagreement on just what's going to happen this weekend but we'll watch that as we go day by day just kind of a heads up there for some thunderstorms returning to oregon over the next few days this is portland oregon check it out the european calling for three days 100 plus and wednesday it's going to be close there you see 
see the average high for this time of year, right around the 84 degree mark as it slowly downward trends as we go through the end of August. But that trough here should return us to normal as we start to go through next week, and we'll watch that one come in. But we got a few very hot days to go here across the Portland metro. Check it out. Some of these overnight lows only getting down towards 70 degrees here, maybe on in through Tuesday morning. So not much relief overnight. You can see well above average for this time of year. This is Portland, Oregon, again on the GFS though. And you can see four days, 100 plus here. Look at Monday, 107 degrees there. <laughs> very hot. And you can see some of these overnight lows on the GFS, 70 plus as well. Check out the wet bulb globe temperature out there. A perfect combination of some humidity, strong sun high temperatures for some extreme values there this would be for monday and tuesday for the portland metro and you've got three other days where you're dealing with dealing with high there as well so be careful out there take breaks this doesn't really stress your body quite quickly if you're out there during peak heating and this takes into account ambient temperature humidity wind speed sun angle direct sunlight and cloud cover so yeah it's going to be really hot across willamette valley this week and they're going to start that up today this is the seattle metro here and you can see some days getting right up towards 90 degrees degrees Tuesday Wednesday Thursday potentially hitting 90 degrees at SeaTac outside chance there on Monday GFS something similar we'll show that one next but you can see the above average temperatures existing with this heat as we go through this week this is looking at the GFS check out some of these overnight lows into the mid 60s only getting down to 66 degrees but it's calling for three days of 90 plus here Monday Tuesday Wednesday for SeaTac and we're going to get pretty darn warm here again today potentially mid and upper 80s not out of the question and another very warm day there on on Thursday also so nice hot week coming up here and you can see for Seattle obviously not getting quite as hot but you still have some moderate risk there for some uh, heat related illnesses possible especially for vulnerable populations this is the story check it out the uptick they got from Monday 96 now showing up on the European for tomorrow story of Oregon get out there and enjoy that because you can see the drop back down towards normal temperatures here but pretty good ensemble spread as always when you look out that far into a forecast but maybe that trophy could bring us back down towards normal but today and tomorrow pretty warm days coming up here for some portions of the oregon coastline hoquiam as well look at that bump up here very nice day to be out on the washington oregon coast as you go through monday before the return potentially to normal conditions you get Moses Lake here, four days, 100 plus, and you're going to get today and Friday are going to be pretty close here as well. As you can see, the average time for this average high for this time of year is right around the low 90s. And here we go for Moses Lake as well. Look at some of this one, two, three, four days into the high category there as well. So very warm there east of the Cascades also. Nanaimo, check it out. You could be pressing 90 degrees here for tomorrow and Tuesday as well. And this is the chance for getting 80 plus degree temperatures here. Virtually a lock for many areas today. Tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, you guys get the drill here. We're going to definitely warm up here across the region. Now taking a look at 100 degrees or greater. And you can see today, check it out. I mean, you're talking about the Willamette Valley. Pretty good odds today pressing 100 degrees. You know, not counting for that smoke really that could cut into some of the temperatures a little bit there but here we go for monday starting to get into southwest washington as well and for tuesday again and a repeat of that and very warm in eastern washington as well so yeah some pretty extreme temperatures coming up here this is looking at 900 millibar wind heights and you can kind of see the offshore float to the component of the wind here and as we go through the day to day it relaxes a bit but then overnight and into tomorrow morning hours the thermal trough off the coastline you can clearly see the offshore flow so anything burning across the Cascades and some of British Columbia is going to try to make its way down into some of the areas west of the Cascades here. And then as we go through Tuesday, we start to bring this onshore flow a little bit back here across some of the region. And that could really be problematic for some any fires that are going across some of the Cascades, especially the east slopes here as we go. And we're still going to have very warm air aloft as well. And you kind of see this upper level low starting to make its way up the California coastline here as well by the time we get into Wednesday. Maybe bringing some thunderstorms back into the region. This is 850 millibars, and I'm just kind of showing you what's going on aloft. You can see the offshore flow at 5,000 feet and the very warm temperatures here. You guys have heard me talking about this for days now, and it's finally here. And so, yeah, here we go. You can see as we go through Wednesday afternoon, and not much relief aloft for the very warm temperatures. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to compare the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. If we put this into motion, you can see pretty good agreement in the short term. The European was a little bit stronger 
with the ridge over the area. But pretty good agreement here. We're going to stay warm through mid portion of this week. And then we start to get some disagreement here. You can see the upper level low off the coast of California here. But look at the GFS and the European. The European says, no, nah, this is going to miss way off to the north and east. The GFS brings a much more you know, impactful trough here across Pacific Northwest. As you can see, heights much higher here on the European versus the GFS. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to win this battle. This is not that far out. So pretty good model disagreement here as we start looking out towards the end of the week. More on that here over the next couple of days. This is total precipitation on the European and just trying to highlight the fact that we do have that potential for some thunderstorm activity moving back up into Oregon here, which could be fire starters as we go through this week. This is six to 10 days here. You know, we're going to be above average, most likely, depending on how that trough comes in here. We are getting to the period where this is just starting to come in after the main heat wave here across Pacific Northwest. Six to 10 day precipitation. Check it out with that signal, that upper level low here coming across the region. We are above average here. Nice bullseye there across southeast Oregon into Idaho and northern Nevada as well. And I've been showing this one the last few days. We have drought development continuing here across Pacific Northwest, and we have drought persisting across some of these areas in the brown here as well. And this is looking off into the extended. You can see NW11, some lightning potential there across the Blue Mountains, Northeast Oregon, and some of the east slopes of the Oregon Cascades can be under the gun here as we go through the seven day period. But yeah, going to be some high risk there. And then you see those little lightning bolts there for some dry lightning potential. But anyway, yeah, it's here. You can see the ridge over the area right now. Hopefully that smoke isn't too bad for areas that are getting it right now. But yeah, let's try not to start any more. Most of these uh, fires are human caused. So anyway, yeah, um, we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll continue to check out these temperatures and get out there and enjoy that heat. Be careful out there. It's going to get downright hot for some areas. I know still a lot of places in like Seattle and Portland don't have air conditioning. So, you know, you guys probably know how to beat the heat at this point. But anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll check things out. Click like and subscribe and I will talk to you guys then.